Praise. Praise is a privilege. Praise is a lifestyle. Praise is something you have to learn how to do. Most people learn how to complain first. They learn how to be negative first. And so praise is positive, and you have to learn how to do that. And the Word teaches us how to praise. The Word teaches us why we should praise, because praise is healthy. Uh, Praise is not worldly. The world doesn't understand praise to God, and it doesn't want to. They don't want to. But praise will keep you healthy. How's that? You learn how to praise, it'll keep you healthy. If you need healing, praise will help bring the healing to your body. If you uh, need salvation, you got to learn how to praise God and he brings salvation. Salvation in the sense that whatever you need, God is able to do at any given time. Say hallelujah. So praise sets the atmosphere in your life. You have choices to make. You can get up and be upset or you can get up and be full of praise. All depending on what you want to do. You want to be mad at somebody? You can find a reason for that. But if you want to get up and be full of praise and full of joy, God will bless you. Say hallelujah. It's a choice. It's a choice you're going to make. It's a choice how you're going to live. Uh, Life is full of choices. God has given us the ability to make choices. A lot of times we make wrong ones. But he has given us choices. And so we're going to choose. We choose to praise God. Hallelujah. We choose to give him glory. We choose to live in a spirit and an atmosphere of praise. Uh, This day is a day of praise. This is why we're preaching on praise. There's no really other subject to preach on other than praise. I could give you a historical rundown of what happened on Palm Sunday, which I've preached on many times, but I just felt yesterday God said, no, we're going to do praise We're going to do it. Hallelujah. We're not going to talk about it. We're going to do it. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So the book of Psalms is really the book of praise. And the authors of Psalms, and many of them were King David, focused on praise. And they understood how important praise was. I was reading uh, some historical events back a few months ago, and I was impressed by... Uh, what the rabbis did uh, with people in Europe when they were getting pushed out of the country of Spain. I don't know if, how many of you know history, but Ferdinand and Isabella, who sent uh, the founding father over here, Columbus, to discover, were, were not so good. How many of you know that? They were not so good. They were very bad, really. And they threw all the Jews out of Spain. And as they were leaving Spain, a lot of them didn't know where they were going, what they were doing, what they were, where they were going to go. They were weeping and they were mourning on the way. Now, how many of you know it's tough to deal with depressed people? They don't want to listen. They, they're going on their feelings. And suddenly the rabbis commanded them to praise. The rabbis said, we're not going to listen to you weep, wail, and mourn. Yes, it's rough. We don't know where we're going. But now we're going to change the whole approach. Now you're going to be happy and now you're going to sing to God. And we command you to sing. We command you to worship God. And as they did, the depression left. Say hallelujah. And they got into and they came into a blessing of God. Now, they had just lost everything. But they were still rejoicing. Say hallelujah. And God used that to save them emotionally, spiritually, keep them together. So it doesn't matter what you go through. You have to learn how to praise your way through it. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand. you got to praise your way through it. Now, it's a lot easier to praise uh, when you feel like it. (laughs) come on it's a lot easier to praise when you're feeling happy and good a lot easier to praise when you feel like dancing jumping around amen it's much more difficult to praise when you uh your feelings are low 
But you have to learn how to praise at all times. Because praise is a choice you make. It's nothing to do with your feelings. Your feelings will change. Say hallelujah. All right? So God commands us to stay in an attitude of praise, to live our lives in an attitude of praise. I try my best. Sometimes I don't always succeed. Sometimes I fly off the handle a little bit. Usually when I'm in a traffic jam. How many of you notice what, what's going on up here at Pawtucket Avenue? They're building the bridge. I felt like I was back in Brooklyn. Uh, I, got, I got upset. My wife had to calm me down. I was getting mad at people. People are the problem. No, it's the bridge is the problem, you know? I was getting upset. I was losing my, my spirit of praise, which is easy. You have to be careful. But you have to be determined to stay in praise. Amen. Glory to God. And so I just turned my attention. I said, Lord, now there's something good for me. My wife says, yep, you're going to learn patience. You're going to learn how to be patient. All right. One way or the other, God has a lesson to teach you. Amen. If it's on Pawtucket Avenue for 45 minutes, you will learn something. Say hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why? God's in control. <laughs> If I would have had a brain, I would have went in another direction. No. God had me there right there to teach me a little lesson. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. So, praise is a part of our life, and we have to learn how to live it out every day. Is it difficult? Sometimes it is, but most of the time it's very pleasant. It's much better to live a life of praise. It's much easier. It's much more fun. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's much more positive, much more positive. And uh, it just, it makes, it's God's, it's God's healing power. When we're positive and we're full of praise, the Spirit of God is moving through us. Say hallelujah. We're simply conduits. We're pipelines for God's love. And as we praise, the love of God comes out of us on a regular basis. Now, like I said, it's much easier to praise when you're feeling like praising. Much easier, okay? But we have to practice praise, and we have to practice bring, bringing our emotions under control. And we have to say, now, emotions, we're going to praise God now, whether you feel like it or not. Say hallelujah. Amen. And so, therefore, it works. It brings us right back to where we can hear God. When we're in a negative state, a lot of times you can't, you can't hear what the Spirit of God's saying. You can't. You've got to stay in a attitude of praise to really catch what the spirit is saying to you spirit sometimes just works on us spontaneously and we feel like praising god we do and we get right into it we flow with it hallelujah on palm sunday 2000 years ago praise was spontaneous nobody had to say praise jesus they already knew who he was this is the guy that did all the miracles this is the guy that changed things in our lives. This is the guy that brought changes in all of Israel and Jerusalem. So the people ran out spontaneously. Nobody told them to do it and started breaking palm branches off. That's why we give out palm. We call it Palm Sunday. They started breaking branches off the trees and they started waving them around. Now that was in not a custom that they started with Jesus. This was an ancient custom. It was a custom that when rulers came through and kings and princes, and after a war they hailed the heroes home, they went up on the trees and broke the branches and waved them around. Then, when it really got crazy, they took their coats off, and they laid the coats in the streets, and Jesus rode a donkey down through there. And you know what donkeys do? Doo doo. Okay? And the donkeys walked down, and the animals walked, and the people followed. By the time the parade was finished, their clothing was pretty dirty. But they didn't care. It was an act of praise. Say hallelujah. They were happy to have Jesus walk on their jacket. The truth. They were happy to have everybody praising God. They were beside themselves. 
Once in a while, the Holy Spirit really moves. You get beside yourself and you get beyond your brain. And that's where God can really work. Say hallelujah. We're beyond your thought process. <laughs> hallelujah. Hilarious laughter. Laughter that is unreasonable in the mind, but it's the Holy Ghost working in you and through you. Hallelujah. So they had this praise, this fountain of praise, a volcanic eruption of praise. It'll be the same thing that happens here when Jesus comes back to the earth, and it will be the same thing that'll go on for eternity in heaven. Hallelujah. There will be times when there will be volcanic eruptions of praise. Say hallelujah. Come on now. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> I was uh, listening to somebody that had an experience about heaven, and I was fascinated by what he was saying. He was saying that people were, were this little portion or place where he was in heaven, very small place, he was, all of a sudden they heard that Jesus was going to come through, and everybody left, got up and left, and ran down, let's go see him. Everybody left and ran, like, like run down to the corner, to the major intersection, and everybody screamed and waved and clapped and went through. You're going to be doing that a lot in heaven. You might as well get used to it down here, because you're going to be giving God glory forever. Say hallelujah. <laughs> glory to God. Amen. That's right. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. So out of this spontaneous eruption of praise, Jesus comes through. He didn't orchestrate it. He wasn't looking for it. It just happened. It was the Holy Spirit that generated this love and this appreciation on the inside of the people. All of these people had been touched in one way or another. Their lives had been changed. And they had, they had seen the works of Jesus for three years. And they had seen. Now, there was another crowd that wanted to use Jesus for political reasons. And they wanted him to overthrow the Romans. But it wasn't time yet. But anyway, they joined in and they screamed and they yelled and they felt, oh, we're going to have a revolution now. We're going to get rid of the Romans. They didn't understand that God is in control of the times and seasons. God's in control. But anyway, the spontaneous eruption, the... Pharisees were there, the leaders, the religious leaders of the people, and they chided Jesus' disciples and Jesus, and they said, shut them off. Look at the praise they're giving to you. They didn't realize he was the son of God. They didn't want to realize that. Shut them down. And Jesus simply turns around and says, if they don't, the rocks will. What a statement. Well, I don't want any rock making noise for me. I'm going to make my own noise. Say hallelujah. Amen. He said, if they don't praise me, the rocks will. And let me tell you something. The rocks would have. There is no doubt in my mind that the rocks wouldn't have jumped up and started making noise. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. But we don't need any rocks to make our noise. We're making our own. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is a day of praise. Amen. So this whole procession went on. And Jesus came back into Jerusalem. And he was treated literally as a king. As a king. He was treated like a king. I'm not going to preach about it, but it was, there was a negative consequence to that, meaning the leadership in Jerusalem said, we can't have this because now it's either him or us. So we got to do something about this. And they did, but what they didn't realize was it was all in the plan of God. They actually, by fighting Jesus, fulfilled God's eternal purpose and plan. And you've got to watch out sometimes that you don't fight God. You've got to watch out for that. So I'm not going to talk about that today, but I'm just going to say you've got to watch out that sometimes you think something is right when it's really wrong, and you can be confused. And we don't want to fight God. The main thing is that the praise that went up as a volcanic eruption ushered in Jesus. Now, there's a little secret here, a little secret. Anytime you need to see Jesus, just get into praise. Anytime you need the Spirit of God in your life, anytime you need an answer, 
Anytime you got a problem at home, in the family, on the job, uh, just very simply, we went on a trip 12 days ago, uh, 14 days ago, excuse me, came back Friday, and uh, right away, there again, my wife's telling me God's teaching you patience. We get to the airport, there's an hour and a half delay. All right. I was already there early, which is rare for me. But uh, I was there an hour early, and now we've got to wait another hour and a half. I said, at the end, I felt, you should be paying me to take this trip. You know? I, I, we just, I knew it was God. God was in it. He's just teaching me a few things. So, all right, we're down there, and we go to get a car, and that's all messed up. And then we get the car, but it's better than the one I had thought about. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. The girl said to me, you'll, you'll like this car. And I did. My father liked it. Everything worked. There was plenty of room for the luggage, plenty of room in the back seat. Everything worked. And it wasn't the model that we had ordered. How many of you go on a trip, you get up to the desk, and you say, I ordered this car. Well, we're all out of those. It seems like they're all out of that all the time. They got some, we got something better for you. They want to charge you another $20 a day. You know, they want to do something else, add something else. No, 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 I'm not paying any more money. But anyway, it was better. Say, so I was thank, thanking Jesus. Yes, you got control. And the whole time we were there, we were praising God every day. This car is great. It is. It was great. It was great. It was a Lincoln. That's right. And so God gave it to me. Amen. I hadn't planned on getting it. But it was good. It was good. What was that? God's favor. God. And then I was just praying. The whole week I was thanking God for that car. I was. He was got a tremendous ride. Doing 90. Felt like you're doing 40. <laughs> on I-4 in Florida, on I-4, going from Daytona to Tampa, uh, over towards uh, Orlando and, or towards Tampa, the traffic flies. They're doing 85 miles an hour. Like, and like, like, that's the slow lane. That's not even the passing lane. But yes, it was praising God. It was praising God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What you see is God is in control. Say hallelujah. And if you stand back and let him, he'll bless you. He'll take care of the situation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 34, we're only going to do a few verses. We were going to do a whole bunch, but I knew that God had another plan. Psalm 34, verse 1. I will bless the Lord, okay, at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. These are lessons that you have to do. You can't learn them and memorize them and then not do them. These are lessons that you have to live out. We have to praise the Lord at all times. You will find out from experience that when you wake up with praise and begin to praise the Lord, your day will go right. Your day will be in order. may not be the order you planned, but it will be in God's order. Say hallelujah. So number one, you have to bless and stay in an attitude of praise at all times. At all times. At all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And you have to make a covenant with God. You have to make a promise with God. God, I'm going to praise you all the time. I'm going to praise you all the time. And God will work things out. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Psalm 71, verses 21, 22 and 23. Now notice this, I will also praise you with a harp, talking about musical instruments. I will praise you with a harp, even your truth. What do we do? We praise God's truth. O my God, to you I will sing praises with a lyre. O holy one, that's a smaller harp, the lyre, the holy one of Israel. My lips will shout for joy when I sing praises to you and my soul, which you have redeemed. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. All 
principle of music was created by God to bring praise to God. All of it. Now the devil's grabbed it, and he's run with it, and he's using it. But we, we take it back. Every periodically we grab it back and we use it. Say hallelujah. God uses music. Every generation has its own sound, has music, and God uses that to communicate. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. It was a Scandinavian person in our church back years ago in Brooklyn, a Norwegian man, and this is way back when I was young, and this was when jazz was in, jazz music, before rock and roll, jazz. And uh, his son's name was John. <laughs> I'm laughing already before I tell you the story. And uh, he used to listen to the radio. He listened to jazz. And his father knocked on the door one day, and he ran, and he said, Yanni, Yanni, stop playing that jazz and start playing something about Jesus. He had it all discombobulated in the language side, but he knew who he should be listening to. Say hallelujah. You better start listening to songs about Jesus. Amen. And that's true for all of us. Watch out what you listen to. Light Rock 105, watch out. You won't be praising God. That's for sure. That's for sure. You can't. You got to keep your mind on God. Keep your mind tuned in to Christian music. You got to use Christian music. It sets the tone for you. Say hallelujah. It sets the atmosphere. Music brings praise to God, and it sets an atmosphere of faith where God can move. But it's what is it? It's praise. It's God speaking to us through music. That's praise. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. All right, let's go on to the next reference quickly. We're only going to do a portion of the sermon today. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Psalm 100, verse 1 through 5. Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Now, number one, praise is shouting, too. It's shouting. Now, when we praise, we usually praise in conjunction with everybody else. Meaning, if the whole congregation is praising, we praise. If we're not praising, we don't jump up and shout. Very rarely. We used to have Big Mike DeVore that used to jump up in the back row over there and run down the aisle and run around. But God used them. That was sort of a gifting that God had given him, a ministry. People used to jump three feet off their seats when he started. But... We shout usually in unison, say hallelujah, in praise. When it's time to praise, we all praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Back to the word. Back to Psalm 100. <clears throat> shout joyfully to the Lord. How do you shout? Joyfully. All the earth. Now notice this. We've never seen this yet, but we will. This is a prophecy. The earth is commanded to shout joyfully. Someday they will. The earth will shout joyfully to Jesus. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. All of creation, that's what we're saying. All of creation will shout to the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. That's praise. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. By praise, we admit to the fact that God created us. By praising him, we're saying, God, you created us. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't decide to come here. You sent us here. We didn't make a decision to be here. You made a decision for us to be here. Say hallelujah. Amen. And so these are all reasons, these are all facts that God gives us 
to praise him. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Keep following along with me here now. <clears throat> we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. That's how you come to God's house. Come cranked up and ready to praise. And matter, now, if you come with children, you better start praising in the car long before you get here. Because something will happen on the way. Something will always happen. My wife used to say, World War III breaks out every Sunday morning. He touched me. Get his hand off me. And that tends to take the praise away. So, you've got to make up your mind that you're going to praise God no matter what. Say hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. We're going to have Palm Sunday every Sunday. Every time we come to God's house, we're going to praise him. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 103, beginning on verse 1. Bless the Lord. This is another instruction on how to bless the Lord and how to praise God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. How do I bless God? How do I praise with everything that is within me. Don't praise God half-heartedly. I raised my hand. No. Give God everything. Say hallelujah. With everything that's within me, we praise God. That's what they were doing on the first Palm Sunday, you better believe it was with everything that was in them and they were praising God. Say hallelujah. They weren't looking to get out of church early. They were praising God all the way through. They were having a, a hilarious time. They were glad to be there. Everything that was within them, they were giving God glory. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget none of his benefits. <clears throat> then he goes on to tell us what they are. Pardons all your iniquities, heals all your diseases, redeems your life from the pit. Now, we have to keep reminding ourselves of why we praise the Lord. He saves us. He redeems us from hell. That's what he's saying, life from the pit. He heals us. He provides for us. This is a constant thing that's going on day in and day out. Where mainly we're not aware of all that God's doing. We're not. But he's constantly taking care of us all the time. There's always a reason to praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. <clears throat> I'm going to jump down here to Psalm 13, 113, verses 1 through 4. Praise the Lord. Praise. Now, this is a command. Praise the Lord and then praise who? O servants of the Lord, praise the name of the Lord. Anybody that's a servant of God... God commands to praise him on a regular basis. Anybody that works for God, and if it doesn't matter, you're not the pastor or something else, that's not the point. If you're God's, you're commanded to praise him all the time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise will bring the answer that you're looking for in time. It'll usher it right into your life. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Looking for a change? Praise it in. Praise it in. Looking for a miracle? Praise it in. After you ask for it, after you petition God, after you pray for it, praise, praise him for it. You don't need to continue to petition. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. No, 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 no. Just begin to say, Lord, I thank you for it. I thank you for it. I thank you for saving this one. I thank you for saving that one. I thank you for healing me. I thank you for touching this one. I thank you for providing for my needs. I thank you. I just thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. That's all praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. 
I'm going to skip all the way down. I'm going to do one here. Does he have Psalm 150 up there? Do you have it? Check and see. You got 150? I'm going to jump down because it's, I'm going to lose a little time here. Thank you, Jesus. You got it? Turn with me to Psalm 150. All right. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. Praise God where? In his sanctuary. Right here. In Zion Gospel Temple. Right here. Praise God in his sanctuary. This sanctuary was built for praise. Every time I get in here, I feel the presence of God. This sanctuary was built for praise. So don't come here like feeling like you can't praise, because this place was made for praise. Hallelujah. People sacrificed to put this building here so that you could have a place to come and praise. Say hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. Amen. Hallelujah. Praising. All right. I'm going to go through this quick. Praise God in his sanctuary. Next point, one, verse one. Praise him in his mighty expanse, meaning in his whole creation. Praise God. One of the things that Christians can do better than worldly people is they can appreciate scenery, and when they see something, they know God was in it. When they see something great, they know God's handiwork. God had something to do with this. Might have taken millions of years to make it happen, but God did it. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is involved in the expanse, the universe. Hallelujah. He's up there. Amen. The stars are moving constantly. We're moving. Everything is moving. But God is in charge of the whole orchestra. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise him, too, for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Now notice, mighty deeds and excellent greatness are connected in the same verse. He is excellent in what he does. And he is mighty. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When something is excellent, you can't get better than that. It's true. You can't go beyond excellence. Excellence is the best. Hallelujah. Okay? <clears throat> I'm going to speed read a little bit here. Praise him with trumpet and sound, verse 3. There again, musical instruments. Praise him with the harp and the lyre. There it is again. Praise him with timbrel and dancing. Dancing is made to praise the Lord. Praise him with stringed instruments and the pipe. All kinds of woodwinds instruments. Saxophones, clarinets, flutes, all that. Praise him with loud cymbals. The clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Say hallelujah. We thank God today that we can praise the Lord. That we have our health. That we can be a part of what God is doing. Hallelujah. We can give him praise because he is for praise and we are made to give praise. Hey, hallelujah. Stand with me. Stand with me. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Take the hand of somebody next to you. We're going to just pray a communal prayer here this morning. Hallelujah. Take the hand of somebody. Thank you, Jesus. You might be here and you might say to me, Pastor, I just don't feel like praising God. Nothing's going too good for me. I've got all kinds of problems. Things don't seem to work. The family seems to be in a mess. My job isn't good. My boss is no good. 
My children are sideways. But we're still going to praise you anyway. We're going to praise you anyway. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to praise you anyway. Because we choose to praise you. We choose to praise you. Hallelujah. If your faith is weak this morning, just put your hands up. I'm going to pray a prayer for you. If you wonder if God still loves you, if you wonder what's going on, put your hands up. That's right. Lord, for every hand that's up today, people wondering, does God still love me? What's going on in my life? We thank you now, Lord, that you're touching them right now. Right now, you're working in their lives. We thank you for the precious Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which comes down and works in their life and changes them and touches them. Hallelujah. Lord, free them up so that they can walk in praise. They can confess praise. They can speak praise. They can move in the Spirit of God, <clears throat> in the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Lord. And Lord, if there's anyone here that's not really sure if Jesus is their Savior, we thank you that the Spirit of God is working on them right now. Right now, the Spirit of God is working. Before they leave this building, Jesus becomes their Lord. If that's you, I'm going to pray a short prayer. Just listen. Say after me, Lord Jesus. If you're not sure, Lord Jesus, I want you to be my Savior. Forgive me of my sin. I want to live for you. I want to be with you in eternity. We thank you, Jesus, for touching lives today. Touching lives. Thank you, Jesus. And we thank you, Lord, for touching all of us and bringing us to a higher level of praise. A level of praise where everything we do in our life brings praise to God. Everything. Every situation brings praise. In Jesus' name, we thank you.